Hello and welcome everyone to my latest batch of LD pickups. I've been trying to wait a while before I made a new video, so it's not just me doing like two or three discs at a time, but uh, I've got a really nice batch of interesting titles, not necessarily found at the usual places. I even found some really interesting discs at the local record convention, so that was really interesting. So uh, without further ado, off to the LDE shelf. To start this batch of Laserdisc pickups, I have to start with the two special discs that I actually picked up from our local record convention, surprisingly. On my way out, I noticed one little box at a table with a little sign that said, uh, Laserdisc for a dollar or five for ten or, or whatever. And they were just looking to get rid of a bunch. And I happened to notice that I thought I saw the magical red rectangle sticking out of the top. And I'm like, I must be saying things. Well, let me look anyway. And I'm extremely glad I did, because this was really astonishing to find. Um, so a number of discs in here. I had to buy a bunch of commons uh, to get these two titles. So I flipped through and, and picked ones that I knew I would either watch sometime or wanted to get at some point. And they're all in pretty good shape, but they were just looking to get rid of a lot. So they were like, you know, um, if you buy at least 10, then we'll just, we'll just give them to you. So... Yeah, um, but I got all of these for, for these particular two, and I'm just astonished because um, anytime you find DTS in the wild, it's it's time for celebration. So this is the DTS release of the River Wild, which is the Curtis Hansen picture from 1994 that already has a really common standard uh, Dolby surrounding coded LD out there you can pick up for usually a buck or less. Um, I haven't seen this movie in a very, very long time. I have the standard laser disc, but I always wanted to see if I could find the DTS one before I rewatched it, and lo and behold, I managed to. This is one of the later DTS releases where they switched to this very small banner across the top, uh, much like what you'd uh, see on the first DTS DVDs, for example. So you have this very small black bar, DTS digital surround. But um, I'm pretty sure since this is a later pressing, it'll probably be a slightly improved video master uh, compared to the original. Like the experience I had comparing the versions of The Shadow, for example. But it has the same cover art, and the rear jacket is a little bit uh, moved around to accommodate the big DTS block and blurb about you must have a DTS encoder. Um, what's interesting, though, to note is it talks about if they left the digital sound information up here, which of course isn't true because DTS replaces the digital track, but I'm guessing the analog track, um, what they meant to say is the analog track is um, still stereo surround encoded um, because at least you could play the analog track if you didn't have DTS capability. So I'm now going to fire this up as soon as I get the chance to because I'm really excited to check out the DTS track because I love the three that I've, I've already had, but DTS prices are usually so high um, that it's just very um, cost prohibitive to try out new DTS discs because they're so rare and they can still go for crazy money online. So this was really, really surprising. And I thought this was the only one I was going to need out of this box, but lo and behold, uh, it had a uh, partner in crime. So I can't believe this was in there. But <laughs> this is the DTS uh, release of Jurassic Park, of course. Um, a little bit dinged up. The corner's a bit torn. It's got a little bit of uh, spine wear. But for, you know, less than a dollar for a DTS copy of Jurassic Park, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely there. Um, it's got a nice glossy sleeve. It's very much like the standard um, non-box set release. It has the same gatefold with the discs in the middle. Um, it's uh, glossy inside as well, and it's actually in pretty good shape on the interior gatefold, I must say. So, again, I'm astonished this was in there, and uh, the sellers were very happy for me to pick up as many LDs as I wanted because... They, they just wanted to get rid of them, and apparently they just decided to take one box to the show with them, which is probably good for me because yeah, they, they seem to indicate they had several hundred discs back at their store in the back or like in the back storeroom. So, yeah, I've, I've hopefully they bring some more because, I mean, some of these, you know, it was mostly commons, but, you know, to find two DTS discs in a box of commons is just like, whoa. Um so yeah, otherwise, it's exactly the same jacket-wise, art-wise, but you do have the DTS blurbage down here. A lot of people swear they, they like this pressing. 
um, with the DTS soundtrack, best of all. Um, everybody seems to have their own favorites in comparing the AC3 to the DTS, to the DTS DVD, to the Blu-ray, to the Dolby Surround, to the original um, theatrical DTS. So there's a lot of different uh, versions of Jurassic Park in terms of audio, and a lot of people seem to debate and have their own favorites. Um, this is one of those where it's supposedly got the uh, surrounds at too high of a level, um, which was then later corrected, I believe, for the DVD. Um, but a lot of early DTS titles, uh, it's rumored or supposed that they have the surrounds in an elevated level. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily true for all early DTS discs, but um, I must say I really like <laughs> every one that I have. So I don't know if they have those elevated surrounds, but I just love the ones that I have already even more than their Blu-ray counterparts. So maybe some of that is in there. Um, but I'm really excited to fire this up. And again, just astonished this was in a box of commons. So uh, I'll go through the rest of the commons in this video. So you'll see what I had to pick up in order to snag these two DTS titles. So I also picked up some nice discs from some of our group sales and basically made my own lot of discs for, for some really nice prices. So this one is my uh, loan criterion uh, edition. Uh, I got it for a really nice price. It's got a little bit of box wear. Uh, the hinges are, are kind of, uh, well, at least some have kind of split, but that's that's kind of common on Criterion boxes when they get this old. But uh, usually when I see this one, it's, it's kind of trash because it seems to be one of the big uh, Criterion sellers that people bought and watched a lot. Um, so the rest of the box is in really great shape, and it was at a really, really nice price. So I picked up spine number 120, which is, of course, the CAV special edition box set of Raging Bull. I've always wanted to get this, but it always eluded me, or I find the CLV one, and I just wanted to get the CAV version in the box set to get all the extras. And I'm excited to compare it to the MGM pressing, which is really good and has uh, the original mix and sounds really great. Um, so, so far for me, um, even though I have the newest remastered Blu-ray with the uh, newer master on it, which is great visually, um, audio-wise, it has a remix, and the LD is so much better. Um, so I'm excited to compare this Criterion to the MGM. Uh, it, they may share transfers because MGM and Criterion did do that some sometimes back in the day. Um, but, of course, you do get some really nice supplements on here, this lovely art on the box. Um you know, I mean, they didn't even need to put the title on there. <laughs> it's just, it's quite iconic by now. Um, so, you, of course, have the custom Criterion label. Show you that there. And then here's the rear with the really nice Criterion essay. And I like how they went with a sort of black-gray background that really works well with the red and the white text. Um, so I think this is one of their best uh, color layouts for, for a rear jacket. And of course, the CLV has the same essay, the same transfer, the same uh, or version of the original mix, Dolby Surround encoded, PCM. Um, but here on this special edition, you not only get a, uh, a really nice audio commentary, but the trailer, uh, the usual Criterion supplementary text stills, lobby cars, photo stills, um, essay pieces about the film. Uh, you also get the uh, Siskel and Ebert review, uh, which is, was included, which was very uncommon to do at the time. Um, and it's always really cool to get the vintage opinion of leading critics at the time about a film that later becomes uh, such a landmark classic in a lot of ways. So this is one I've wanted to pick up for ages. Usually it goes for quite a bit of money. So I always wanted to see if I could get it for $10. Certainly didn't think I would get it for less than $10, but lo and behold, this copy popped up. So yeah, I was definitely picking it up. This next one also is from the Facebook group. This is a very uncommon disc that just, you know, popped up super cheap. So I was like, heck yeah, I'll check it out. And um, they are on DVD uh, from Warner Brothers through the TCM outlet and Warner Archive, but I'm pretty sure it's the same uh, as this Laserdisc Master. So this is the MGM double feature of two Lon Chaney Sr. films. So it's the silent film uh, West of Zanzibar uh, paired with the sound remake of The Unholy Three. And uh, 
this is kind of like their uh, double feature of classic horror films. They did a couple of those. Uh, they did the double feature of Prisoner of Zenda films. Um, so MGM was really starting to dig into their back catalog, and they did a number of these really awesome double feature sets of really great classic horror, classic films, and even silent films, and then just plain stop. So um, that means they didn't really print a lot of these, so they're very much on the uncommon side, and I was really surprised this popped up, and it's in really nice shape. I like the cover art a whole lot, even though they're obviously uh, designed for VHS. I do like the colorization effect and the way they've tinted these stills with the usual sort of airbrushed MGM look from their video department. Um, I love it how it's paired with the gold banner across the top. Um, so it's very reminiscent of their double feature pairings of, um, for example, when they released the Warner Gangster films on Laserdisc in double feature sets. So each film pretty much, um, I think it's just, yeah, it's, it's three sides. So um, you pretty much watch each film back to back, three sides across two discs. And then you get this nice gatefold with these lovely color tinted stills and uh, nice chapter breakdowns for each. Of course, West of Zanzibar gets a uh, score accompaniment, and The Unholy Three is the sound talky remake version. So uh, don't buy this and expect it to be the original silent version. Um, of course, these have been released. I think these are both in the uh, Cheney TCM Archives box set, but I'm pretty sure those are just... Um, they're they're the same laser disc masters and then warner archive has done um another um mod release of cheney films and it has more of the silent classics in there and i've been meaning to pick both of those up for ages but uh the tcm one's like in and out of print and it, it can get pricey so i've been trying to find each of them uh at a, at a low price because i've seen some of the classic cheney silent films and i know the titles and the synopsises of most of them and i've seen them on like Sunday Night Silence on TCM before, um, but I really want to do a deep dive and go back in and, and watch all of them and get a get a fresh perspective because they're they're all exceptional. Even sometimes if certain films are not as good as others, his performances are just they're they're legendary for a reason. So this was a really nice find. It has PCM uh, digital mono for each. Um, and of course just keep in mind this is the talky remake of Unholy Three and not the silent version. This next one is a title I didn't even realize was on Laserdisc, and it apparently is very uncommon. So, and uh, it's definitely you know a niche classic foreign film art house title. So I can see why they were, they didn't sell tons of these. Um, but anyway, this is a image release from 1996, so it's getting on up there in LD years. This is a double feature of films directed by Jean Cocteau. Um, so this is uh, Les Parents Terribles paired with Les Enfants Terribles. And uh, Les Enfants Terribles is, is pretty well known, and I, I saw it years and years ago, but uh, I have never seen the former film. So I saw this in, in, in a group of discs that somebody was selling on the Facebook group, and I'm like, I'll take that one too, because <laughs> I didn't even know that was on Laserdisc. And then when I looked it up on the database and saw, hey, it's pretty late, and it should have really nice picture quality. So I figured, why not? Uh, it is image. It is unfortunately not a gatefold, so there is a little bit of corner creasing. But uh, yeah, I figured it'd be interesting to revisit the one film and then check out the other one finally. Of course, uh, these are foreign, so they are not in English, so they are subtitled. Um, but they have their original mono tracks with uh, PCM encoding. And uh, since it's from 1996, it should be a really nice disc transfer because by this point in time, Image actually, you know, was cranking out really good discs. And then shortly after this, they would take over LDs for pretty much all the major studios who were already jumping on to DVD. Um, I'm pretty sure Criterion released uh, at least one, if not both of these, on DVD later. Um, so I don't know if these are the same transfers as those. But uh, it should be pretty interesting and should be a really nice transfer seeing as it's from 96. Next up is a, a really good underrated classic title, another to uh, add to my ever-growing shelf of uh, Nicholas Ray LDs. So this is the RKO Classic Collection release of Born to be Bad. Of course, as I said, directed by Nicholas Ray, really one of the... I mean, it's usually put into the noir category, um, so yeah, it, I definitely think it fits. Um, but uh, you have Joan Fontaine and Robert Ryan, who is 
incredible as always. Um, and he seemed to work really well with Ray, or Ray was able to pull out a lot um, of uh, interesting performances out of Robert Ryan, which Nicholas Ray was seemingly able to do that with most every actor. Um, so it's it's really great to go back to um, even the Ray films like this. They're still really, really great, but you know, not as well known or not as revered as say rebel without a cause or in a lonely place um but uh yeah definitely a, a really great film if you've never seen it um pretty much i'd recommend anything ray directed in his major hollywood career um but particularly the noirs and um but yeah so this is a lovely pressing from image in their archaeo classic series and i'm working my way to try to get um you know, at least the ones I'd like, it'd be really cool to get all of the RKO discs like some people have, but uh, some of them are quite rare. So anytime I see one for cheap and it's in decent shape, I just I just grab it. Um, of course, this is all out on later versions, which are probably going to be a bit more cleaned up, but it'll be interesting to check out the transfer. It has a PCM mono track and everything, so it's just another one of these great, uh, great films released via the RKO Classic Collection. Next up is a title that um, I've almost bought before, but for some reason I always thought it was only Pan and Scan or Open Mat available because apparently I was looking at the older editions. So uh, it wasn't a, a, it wasn't until I realized there was actually a widescreen version that I was like, oh, and I added it to my wish list. So this was a super cheap copy. It's not as common to find this, particularly the widescreen version. So I was like, I can take the jacket being a little dinged. So this is the letterbox release of Scorsese's masterpiece, Mean Streets, uh, which is his first major feature of note. Of course, he had made what I think is 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 a really great uh, debut feature, Who's That Knocking at My Door? But of course, it's not necessarily going to be for everybody because it's a very low-budget film. Um, so Mean Streets is really the first major major feature that has the Scorsese imprint all over it um, of course there's other things like Boxcar Bertha in there but Mean Streets is, is the first one that's a full-fledged Scorsese picture and I don't think anybody could really argue with that idea um, and I think it's a very important film in American cinema the American cinema of the 70s I think it's a really not quite properly appreciated now because it is truly great. It's one of the important key Scorsese works in a lot of ways. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to check out this LD pressing. It has the original one sheet art, which looks really nice placed against the black background. I wish the jacket was in a little bit better shape, but seeing as I paid literally <laughs> like a buck or two for a lot of these, I, I'm okay with the jacket being a little dinged and of course, I have the Blu-ray and the DVD and such, so this was really just to check out the transfer. And, uh, of course, it has PCM Mono on here, which is great, and it'll be interesting to compare that to later releases. Uh, it's a pretty good jacket. I like how Warner went with a white background and then black here for the stills, which are well-chosen, well-printed. Um, so it's a lot better and definitely a step above the usual generic Warner sleeve. So if you want to get Mean Streets on LD, make sure it's this widescreen pressing because the other ones are uh, pen and scan slash open mat. And I think those are analog on only as well. I don't think they have digital sound. But uh, yeah, this is, this is really nice. Been meaning to get this for ages. And then the same can be said for this one. This is, uh, I have the standard release, but I uh, always wanted to pick up this one because it's one of the few Warner CAV uh, films so um, Warner wasn't very often pressing entire films on CAV, but uh, when they did, it's usually they're more award winners or prestige titles, and then they did two Spielberg films that way. Uh, so they did The Color Purple, and then they did uh, what I think is one of his most underrated pictures, Empire of the Sun. I know I've talked about it before in my other videos talking about the regular release, but uh, this is the CAV version, which has this white fancy-looking jacket with the one-sheet art, I guess maybe this was sort of like the first version of uh, the Superbit DVD where it was like, we're going to sell you the movie and it's going to be the best visual quality possible and you get no extras because this doesn't have the feature-length documentary that the standard release does. So that's why you should also pick up the standard release, which is super common. It's like a buck or two. Um, but you tell them apart because this one has the white jacket and the CAV on it. 
Um, unfortunately, it's not a gatefold. It's not a box. I literally just shoved all the discs in here. And this is already, you know, a longish film, you know, two and a half hours. So it's definitely stuffed with discs. Um, so unfortunately, it's a little crinkled. And as you can see, it's wanting to bow out a bit because it's just the usual Warner Brothers thin cardboard, but it's got a bunch of discs shoved in there instead of just one or two. Um, so the film is spread across six sides seems to be the exact same transfer as the standard one same dolby surround encoded pcm track so if you want slightly better video with the full cav encoding and you're not uh you're you're okay with flipping discs a lot um then you can pick up this version but it's just nowhere near as common as the super cheap one but i wanted to get this anyway and check it out in full cav i've been meaning to pick up the uh, blu-ray digi book but that went uh, seems to go out of prints and they seem to want to focus on the keep case version but i've got to pick that up i just keep forgetting of course i have the snapper case dvd uh this next one is for my john sturgis shelf this was a really minty copy of the eastwood western joe kid that sturgis directed uh in the standard universal jacket but uh it was just super clean still in the shrink wrap uh dirt cheap at one of the local stores has a pcm mono track and everything um, I have the Blu-ray of this because I got the Eastwood UK Blu-ray box set, which is a really awesome region-free box set of all the Universal-owned Eastwood films. Um, so m a lot of the Westerns, uh, and then Play Misty for Me, um, The Beguiled, and uh, Coogan's Bluff, things like that. Um, but it's significantly cheaper than the u.s equivalent you can get the this uk box for like usually 10 bucks or less and it includes i think the film breezy which isn't out on blu-ray here so uh if you want to get this film in hd definitely pick up that uk box set it's a really nice little box in that sort of shoe box style um but this ld is really nice and i like the jacket art very much so it was just really cool to find uh in super minty shape still in the shrink and it does include the original trailer which is cool because it's cool whenever they did that because it didn't always happen we're spoiled for special features these days well i wanted to compare the criterion raging bull to the mgm one and then vice versa i finally picked up a copy of the mgm letterboxd some like it hot to compare to the criterion box set um so i'm just curious to see if this is a different transfer or how the picture quality or the audio quality compares and, you know, it's nice to have the nice MGM version as well. Sometimes it's the same transfer. Sometimes it's a little bit different. So I'm not really big on the pink and all the color on this because, of course, the film is black and white. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a pretty decent LD jacket, and it, it looks pretty good. And I like the more modernized MGM letterbox banner on the top. It's a little bit dinged up, but uh, it's honestly, this particular version isn't quite as common as you'd think. So, uh, you know, getting this for finally for like a buck or two, because I've been trying to get this pressing for a while. I don't mind a little bit of wear and tear. The gatefold's pretty good. I do like the nice large still. And of course, they have the aqua background that MGM was so fond of on a lot of their LD jackets. Um, very generous amount of chapters and very well laid out like all MGM discs. And then at the end, you do get uh, the trailer included. So they never gave this the special edition treatment on LD. They did eventually on DVD. But, uh, you know, this is definitely nice if you just want the film on Laserdisc and you don't want to spring for the Criterion box, which is one of their harder to find boxes. And uh, so, yeah, a, a pretty nice release, PCM Mono. Finally, letterbox from MGM. All the previous ones were, of course, open matted or pan and scanned. So I'm going to compare this to the Criterion, and uh, I'm just curious to see how it stacks up, and I'm just very happy that I finally found this particular version. Then lastly, uh, one entry for Series Shelf. This one I've been after for a very long time. It's not exactly rare. It's not exactly essential because it's pretty much identical to the DVD that came out. But I've always wanted to see it since I have the other three. And this is a late release too. So I finally found a nice cheap copy of Lethal Weapon 4 to match my copies of 1 through 3. Of course, it's letterboxed. Uh, but since this is a 1998 film, it means it's a really nice late release laser disc. So that means... It's kind of on the rare side, kind of goes for a bit more usually, but if you're patient, you can get it for very cheap. 
I was really patient, so I've been after this disc for years. <laughs> um, of course, it uses the one-sheet art, which was also used on the Snapper Case DVD. You have the Warner Brothers widescreen moniker here. Uh, it does have 5.1 AC3, like the DVD, but of course, this also has a PCM Dolby Surround track as well for those without AC3 capability. It's also really cool. It includes the making of Pure Lethal documentary that also has snippets of deleted scenes from the whole series that is on the flip side of the Flipper DVD. So that's really cool that they actually put that in there because by this time, uh, almost all special features never made it to LD releases. Since this is a late release, uh, it is pressed by image, which you can see down here, even though it has the Warner shield. So I'm curious to fire this up. I really want to see what the picture quality looks like because I'm pretty sure, like most early DVDs, uh, this LD will probably be a slightly better presentation because they knew how to make LDs, but DVDs were still a new thing. Um, but I remember that being a pretty good DVD. It was a, a standby. I think everybody had that for a long time, and I know I watched it a bunch. Um, I did see this. This was the only film in the series I got to see in the theater because uh, the other three really kind of predated me <laughs> or I was I was way too young um so I was you know I did see this when I was a kid and I thought it was hilarious and awesome um seeing two grown men you know act like this um so it was kind of my introduction to the series I'd seen pieces of the first film so I do have a fondness for this particular one even though in retrospect it's probably the weakest of the of the four films um but it has a lot going for it and Jet Li is really great um as the lead villain um so yeah, I'm interested to check this out. I've always wanted to find this, been after this thing for years. So, um, And also the Blu-ray of this is really, really good. It came out finally in the Lethal Weapon box set. So I'm interested to see how it even compares to that with uh, lossless DTS HDMA audio. But uh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to definitely be a close tie between this and the old uh, Snapper Case DVD. I'm just relieved I finally found one of these. Next, we move on to titles just going chronologically. So starting off with a disc I've always wanted to check out for the transfer, um, of course, the 1955 masterpiece, The Night of the Hunter, which is the only theatrical feature that was ever directed by Charles Lawton, uh, featuring the iconic Robert Mitchum performance. Um, I really love the cover art. It's really striking, and they kind of have this sepia tone vibe to it. They also used this for the VHS tapes back in the day, which I remember seeing this on VHS in the rental stores before as a kid. And it's one of those films I always wanted to see but never got the chance to until you know many years later. So the reason why I wanted to get this disc, it is a 133 presentation, which it was always shown 133 up until the Criterion Blu-ray. Uh, UCLA did a restoration of the film back in the early 2000s. I believe this predates all of the major restorations, or I don't know if UCLA had done one earlier, because they um, will do one, and then if they can access better elements later, do a second one, or add to a previous restoration, or use digital tools to further it. So this also has a PCM mono track that I wanted to compare as well. MGM released this on DVD pretty early, and I don't know if it's exactly the same as this Laserdisc. It does carry the UCLA restoration credit on it, and it has a really good mono track that's actually better than the track on the Criterion Blu-ray, um, which is a bit too, unfortunately, noise-reduced. Um, the picture on the Criterion Blu-ray in the current restoration is really stunning, but the audio on the DVD is actually better. Um, so I was curious to see if uh, this was that same audio track or um, maybe as good, um, because it, since it's an older release, it might uh, be from an older restoration or an older print source, because you never really know. Um, but that's what I like about looking at old LDs. You never know what's actually going to be on the disc until you fire it up and check it out. Um, sometimes it's a great transfer, sometimes it's an okay transfer, sometimes it's not a very good transfer, uh, but sometimes you're pleasantly surprised, and you can never have too many copies of this film in particular because it's just incredible. Um, and for the longest time, it wasn't super well known. It was a very small film. It was not successful on its original release, um, but everybody who saw it never forgot it, uh, particularly if you saw this film as a very young child uh, because it's it's told from a perspective of um, 
of a sort of uh, childlike dreamscape view of the world, and uh, you can see this distance between the uh, main child characters and the adults who all seem to tower and loom over not just them, but the, a lot of the camera setups. So it's a really incredible film, and every time you see it, you marvel at everything in it, and what a shame it was that uh, Lawton never directed again. Um, so it's, it's really one of the great one-of-a-kind pictures that really defies um, typing. You can't really type this down as a particular genre. Uh, and now it's regarded as one of the great American films, which it is. It's one of the great films, uh, period. Um, so uh, really interesting, nice artwork from MGM, a little bit better than their standard jobs. It's not a special edition, but you do get the theatrical trailer. So I'm happy to have finally picked up this particular pressing. This was as crazy of a find as those DTS discs. I found this at one of the local stores uh, for 95 cents, which I'm still amazed that I did. Uh, I was mixed in with a bunch of commons and overpriced discs, but uh, yeah, this, this is crazy. So this is one of the big LD exclusives. This is the letterbox release of Raintree County, uh, which is the big roadshow Civil War epic uh, made in 1957 by MGM. And unfortunately, this film has never been released on DVD for some strange reason. Uh, it was finally released letterboxed for this uh, Laserdisc in the mid-90s. Uh, it has a, a stereo surround PCM track. That unfortunately, it doesn't have AC3. Um, but it was photographed, as said here, in the MGM Camera 65 system, which was basically Ultra Panavision, which was what was used on Ben-Hur as well. Um, so I don't think this transfer quite gets that wide. Um, but it is a really nice transfer, but unfortunately it's the best release of the film we have, and the uh, TCM showings, which happen agonizingly rarely, which I've only managed to catch little pieces of over the years, uh, are all from this LD Master. There is a VHS release as well, but I believe that is pan and scanned. So this is one of those big LD exclusive titles that people still talk about, and you can read it up on forums. There are threads about this film and others, and they're just not on DVD for no apparent reason. Um, so I don't know if this is something Warner Archive might be ta trying to tackle at some point. I don't know if there's an elements problem or a rights issues problem. Um, but this is just one of those films I've always heard about. I've always seen pieces of it, and it's just eluded me for a really long time. Um, so I'm really excited to finally see this, but it's very rare and usually goes for at least $25 or more. Um, and I always get outbid on eBay trying to get one of these. You have this really nice original artwork here. I love the jacket layout. It's very simple. Um, it also, if you notice down here, it says general release version down here. So I don't know um, the particular run times of the Roadshow and eventual cut down versions, but as far as I do know, this is um, you know the first time that you could see the film at a proper length in widescreen with a stereo surround track that should replicate the original 70 millimeter Roadshow release pretty well. Uh, it does have the original overture and intermissions, and it does have the original theatrical trailer, but there are no extras. But uh, I, I love the layout. I like the centerpiece very much. This is definitely MGM stepping up their game a bit, but I believe this disc is from about 95 or so. So this is definitely when they really knew what they were doing with LDs. On the back, the, uh, the pictures are pretty good, but as you can see, it's the standard MGM text block over here. Um, so yeah, I've, I've never actually gotten to see this film in its entirety, and I've always wanted to. I know the critical reputation is a bit mixed on it, but uh, anytime I get to see a classic roadshow film in a good version, I'm excited to do so, whether I wind up liking it or not. But this is just one that's eluded me, and I can't believe I found it for 95 cents. Um, so if you see this, definitely pick it up because it is only on Laserdisc, and it's one of like the big five or ten discs that uh, classic film fans in particular are going to be after on LD. Um, not quite as rare, say for example, as the Roadshow version of the Alamo, but it's definitely you know like top five in desirable LDs to own. So I'm finally going to get to watch this thing. I keep, I always see like five minutes of the end or the middle of it on TCM, and I've never gotten to see the whole thing. So we jump ahead a bit in years and up to 1987, 
Uh, this one I picked up. I've wanted to get this on LD for a while. It says it's a Fox film, and you never know when Disney's going to pull the plug on Fox availability on disc. Um, I figured I'd finally pick a copy of this up. Um, but this is the really nice letterbox reissue of Raising Arizona, which isn't super common. Um, I, I believe there was a pan and scan version first, which was generally available, but I've never seen this in the wild. Um, I looked it up on the database, and that's how I found out there was even a widescreen version. So it's a Fox 90s pressing. You can tell by the searchlight banner across the top here. A pretty nice glossy jacket. Unfortunately, there's a little crumpled corner here, but otherwise it's in perfect shape. Um, so I haven't seen this film in a long, long time, so I'm excited to fire this up. It does have a Dolby Surround encoded PCM track, which should be the original mix. And I really like looking at 80s and 90s films released in Dolby Stereo and actually hearing the Dolby Stereo track. And I know 5.1 remixes are supposed to be the same, but generally, at least in my experience, they do lose some of that feeling and sometimes they're not done very well. So anytime I can check out a film letterboxed with its original soundtrack, I'm very happy to do so. You do get some nice liner notes, which is pretty typical for Fox Disc, but uh, no special features outside of that. So really the best version of this film on Laserdisc, not super common. It's one of these really awesome 90s Fox widescreen reissues. So I was definitely like, heck yes, I will pick this up. This next one is one of the discs I had to pick up to get the two DTS discs, and it's definitely not common. I know people really like to get all of the uh, Ninja Turtles films on LD, so I figured, you know, I could check out this transfer. Why not? Because I was just picking through trying to find discs to add to get the two DTS ones I wanted. So this is the image release of Teenage Mutant... <laughs> wow. This is the image release of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Uh, it's got the New Line logo on there, but it is image, so it has their typical uh, identifier bar across the top with the title. Uh, it's got a PCM Dolby Stereo track, but I believe this, like the first film in this particular version, I think it's a open mat transfer. I believe these films are 185, but I haven't seen them in years. Um, so I think it's open matted. I don't think these got uh, letterbox releases on LD. But uh, like I said before, these are definitely um, a bit on the pricier side because everybody seemingly wants all three on LD. So I um, figured I could give this a watch and then, uh, you know, if, if, I want, if somebody really wanted it, I could maybe pass it on to somebody who really wanted it. But um, yeah, I was definitely surprised to see this in there because usually stuff like this flies out of, uh, you know, used bins like that. Um, so yeah, definitely not what I expected to find. And I was just trying to pick through this, trying to find, uh, you know, 10 or so, so I could get the DTS ones. Same here for this one. This is a, uh, pretty much a, a nice little common title. I haven't seen this film in years, but this is the, uh, I believe this is, yeah, it's image as well of the Castle Rock film, Honeymoon in Vegas, which is, uh, you know, I, I remember it being an a interesting premise for a 90s rom-com. And, uh, you know, I enjoy James Caan and Nick Cage and pretty much anything. So, uh, and I, I do like the jacket. I like the uh, use of the card motif around there. So at least it's got some design going on. And again, I was just trying to find this to add to make a pile just to get those DTS ones. It does have a Dolby Surround digital track. And uh, yeah, it's just a nice CLV release. I really like the rear jacket art. Um, I do think this is 133 though. I think it's an, an open matted disc. I don't think this is widescreen. So it's one of those random uh, 90s discs where there's it's just open mat and they didn't bother making it letterbox. So yeah, I'll spin this up at some point and just, you know, on a rainy day or something. This is another super common 90s disc that I just picked up uh, to make a stack, and it's got a nice cover uh, in, in terms of condition, so I was like, okay, I'll finally get a copy of this. So I got the standard release of A League of Their Own, which is, of course, widescreen from Sony, which means, of course, it's a DADC pressing. Um, some of these can be, like, super heavy rotted. Uh, there's also a version, I think, with a documentary that also can be rotted, but... You know, with DADC, you always play the rot lottery. So the rot reports on this aren't too bad, and the cover's in really nice shape. So I was like, well, and I was just picking through commons, trying to find stuff I didn't have or, you know, I might watch at some point because uh, I really wanted those DTS discs. So anyway, this is letterboxed. It's spread across 
three sides with a Dolby Surround PCM track. So got some nice liner notes, as is common for Sony discs. But I'm not super big on buying Sony discs because I don't like getting halfway through a movie and then it becoming Rot City. So <laughs> I always I always try and spot check before I watch something and and hope I make it through 100%. So we'll we'll try it out with this one. Next up is another super common Sony Columbia disc of a 1992 film. This is Single White Female, which is a nice copy still in the shrink wrap. Um, I've always loved the cover of this. I haven't seen the film in years and years and years and years. Um, I can't remember if we rented it or as a family or saw it on cable years ago or something, but I remember I've seen this, but I just it's been ages. Um, of course, super common disc. Um, another one of the ones I picked up in that uh, box trying to make a little lot to get the DTS ones. Um, again, the jacket's really great. You get some nice liner notes and a nice chapter breakdown. Um, Dolby Surround PCM track, but of course, being a Sony disc, it's a DADC pressing, which I don't think this one all it really has super bad rot reports, but again, Anytime it's DADC from, especially from this era, early '90s, um, there's definitely a high possibility there's going to be some, at least some speckling somewhere. So um, I will <laughs> definitely watch through this and see if it's rotted. But uh, yeah, this one doesn't seem to have, um, you know, really bad rot cases. But again, it's DADC. You never know. This next one is also super common, but uh, you know, it was a nice copy, and I was like, yeah, why not? Um, so this is the Warner Brothers letterbox pressing of On Deadly Ground, the Steven Seagal vehicle. And, you know, even though the cover is ultra generic looking, it, it does look pretty nice on an LD jacket. It's nice and, uh, you know, uses the whole width of the 12 inches and everything. So it looks pretty good. Um, of course, it's widescreen and Warner Brothers tucked the widescreen just like right here, which I always think is kind of funny when they put it up somewhere on the jacket. And then the rear... It's pretty pretty simple and straightforward. By this point, one of the brothers had switched to this sort of use the whole background instead of the side of it and just put the chapters out here and really big. Um, it's just a single disc. has Dolby Surround, um, no AC3 or anything. Um, this film is from 94, so it could have had Dolby Digital theatrically, but I don't know if it did or not. Uh, but at this point in time, most films were still geared up for Dolby Stereo Surround anyway. Um, and of course, it's a Steven Seagal film, but it has Michael Caine in it. So of course, I'm like, okay, I can watch this. Um, but yeah, some of the Seagal vehicles around this time are are still hold up pretty well. I think primarily the Andrew Davis directed ones, especially Under Siege, most of all. Um, so I think this is one of the other ones that's viewed in a better light. So um, you know, I've been wanting to see some of the other Seagal films because I've never seen all of them. So you know, at least. Hopefully, this is one of the better ones. And again, it has Michael Caine in it, so of course I have to own a copy of it. Unfortunately, this copy was not also DTS. I saw the logo, I saw the the picture on the cover, and got excited for a second. Of course, it's the standard version. Um, but you know, I figured, yeah, why not? It's a great, uh, great condition copy. So this is the standard uh, Universal letterbox pressing of Casper from '95, um, which is known for having a really nice. Uh, sound mix from the 90s, a lot of surround activity, primarily with all the ghostly effects and things. Um, I remember seeing this in the theater as a kid, and I remember it being, um, you know, pretty uh, pretty good experience, you know, from, uh, you know, I was just starting to pay attention to, um, you know, not really in technical terms, the, the sound presentation, but just the theater presentation in general. And I remember um, the particular theater where I saw this had really nice sound to begin with. So um, I have this on Blu-ray, which has a nice HDMA mix, uh, but I'd love to find the DTS version someday. But uh, yeah, I was just building a lot of discs, so I picked this up. Uh, the jacket's in great shape. Uh, this does have a THX seal of approval for whatever that's worth. <laughs> um, it does have a digital PCM matrix track, but of course Universal being a DTS partner did not put AC3 tracks on a lot of their LDs until at least 97, uh, much later. So this is another one of those with a great surround track that uh, Universal only put out in a matrixed PCM release. So like Casino, if you want it in 5.1 on LD, you got to track down the pricey DTS disc or get it on DVD or the Blu-ray, which is usually less than five bucks because it gets put in the kids uh, section of most stores. 
Uh, so anyway, just a really nice copy. Figured I'd check out the PCM track and the uh, picture transfer, see how it stacks up against the Blu-ray. But uh, I'd love to find this on DTS at some point. This one I'm actually kind of excited about because I've never gotten to see it more than like two seconds. And of course, its notorious reputation definitely precedes it. Uh, this is the deluxe letterbox release uh, from live home video of the notorious box office bomb Cutthroat Island. And I love that it uses the one sheet art on here. It looks really great on this LED jacket. Of course, it's a deluxe widescreen edition with THX mastering, Dolby surround PCM, 5.1 AC3, pressing by Pioneer, but it's Cutthroat Island. So <laughs> they've got all these monikers on it, but you know they, they want to remind, remind you it's supposed to be a great movie. Don't think that it was a notorious bomb that everybody hated. Um, but yeah, I've never gotten to see this all the way through, so I'm, I'm very curious if it's uh, deserving of the pretty notorious reputation it has. But uh, this is a really nice LD. You get this awesome gatefold of a naval battle. And it's broken onto three sides and actually includes a making of documentary, which I'm sure is probably uh, one of those old school made for uh, Showtime or HBO uh, first look documentaries where it's like 20 or 30 minutes, but you get on set interviews, things like that. Um, so those those are always pretty cool. And they take me back to a much earlier time, <laughs> particularly pre-internet time. Um yeah, this is a really nice LD release. It's definitely put together well. Uh, it's reminiscent to me of uh, things like the Cliffhanger release, the big uh, Pioneer Press Special Edition. Um, and, of course, it's from Corolco as well, so that kind of that kind of fits. Again, it's got the THX seal. It's got a PCM digital track, Dolby Stereo encoded. It's got 5.1 AC3. Um, this is usually pretty common, a very cheap disc, but this one's in super minty shape, so I was definitely happy to pick this up because I just want to finally see this thing all the way through. Um, and it's definitely one of those nice AC3 not really loaded special features, but it's one of these nice AC3 discs you can pick up if you're just wanting to get something to test out, like your RF demodulator or something like that. So yeah, I'm going to fire this up pretty soon and because I just really want to see if if this deserves the just horrible reputation this film has. Next up is another pretty common di uh, disc in terms of 90s commons, but uh, I, I have this on Blu-ray. haven't watched it in a number of years, but uh, the, the art on the LD jacket's really good, so I couldn't say no to a minty copy of Rob Roy, the MGM UA letterbox release uh, with uh, Dolby Surround, PCM, and 5.1 AC3. So this is another one you can pick up if you want uh, to build a good... Uh, cheap collection of AC3 titles. Really nice artwork. It looks really great on the LD jacket, much better than the DVD did, and definitely a lot better than the super generic Blu-ray cover. Then you get this really nice gatefold with a nice landscape shot and then some nicely chosen stills, but I always hate how they just randomly put the stills <laughs> over the, the backdrop. But uh, yeah, definitely a nice MGM release. And getting later on in the game, so... I'm interested to check this out. I'm sure the picture transfer is going to be really great. Um, the Blu-ray is pretty good too, but this is definitely one of those really great, um, really underrated films from the 90s. It's definitely more on the cerebral side, you know, and it came out pretty much in competition with Braveheart. So that meant it kind of got buried in, 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 in that time period in the mid-90s. Um, you know, it did get a good critical reception. It did do pretty decently at the box office, but again, it kind of got overshadowed by Braveheart at all turns. Um, but it seems like people were able to rediscover this on video, and it's got a pretty good reputation now. And of course, most people know it for the really intensive, well-done, old-fashioned sword fights. Uh, so if you're into sword fights, you, you probably already know Rob Roy, but uh, if you didn't, definitely check it out. Um, so I'm interested to check out the transfer on here because it's been a while since I've watched it, so I'll fire this, this up. Um, there is a DTS version of this as well, which of course is crazy rare and expensive, so you can get this lovely AC3 pressing for a buck or two. And this is another common I've, for some reason, never picked up. Every time I find it, it's beat to crap. And uh, people have asked me about which audio mix I prefer of this film. So I was always like, well, as soon as I get an LD version, I'll start making comparisons. So I finally found a minty copy of the super common Independence Day. 
So this is one of those, you know, five or ten LDs that everybody has, except me apparently for some reason. <laughs> or you see it in every common bin. Um, so yeah, I've just been waiting for one like this that has a minty jacket and is in good shape and is not like ten dollars for some reason. Because I've seen copies of this marked for like ten or twenty bucks in stores where they just don't know what LDs are really worth. Um, they should expect people to pay twenty bucks for an LD just because it's laser disc. Um, so anyway, you have the iconic uh, White House destruction sequence on the front cover. Definitely what the cover of this film should be, and uh, one of the best jackets for the film. Uh, the special edition release came later and just has it the black cover with ID4 on it. But uh, I just wanted to always have just a nice jacket of this because it, it's look, it looks great. It's very frameable. has the THX logo up here, and it's a nice glossy cardstock. So... Fox definitely put some money into this film on LD. And then you get this nice gatefold, very much uh, the same design as the 1995 Die Hard reissues on LD. So you get some nice liner notes, again, glossy cardstock, nice stills, and then the chapter breakdown with the film spread on three sides. And then you get the teaser trailer at the end. What's also cool about this release is it has the original promo insert. So this has a whole miniature magazine insert called SciFox, all about Fox science fiction film releases of the 90s and releases coming soon to Laserdisc. Um, I had no idea they did this, but it definitely takes me back to the old days of uh, fan magazines and Starlog, Star Wars Insider, all that stuff. And uh, it's, it's really cute that they did this for um, a Laserdisc release. And then, of course, they have a bit from James Cameron and then a bit about the upcoming Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition, <laughs> which, of course, uh, everybody much later realized um, what exactly all that entailed. But, you know, at first it was going to be amazing. And I still have... There's still things I, I love about the 97 release, but, uh, you know that were later superseded by the increasingly bad uh, special editions to come and their terrible audio mixes. Um, but at least, you know, there is some nostalgia for the 97 version, but, you know, at the time we didn't all realize it was going to made be made to supplant everything that came before. Uh, but anyway, this is a really nice reminder of the <laughs> mid to late 90s. And then also is included the uh, little um, card with the... Um, questionnaire or survey but with the free poster offer for a free independence day poster so maybe if i fill this out somebody at disney will get this and be like what the heck is this and i'll be like see got you where's my free poster so yeah i don't know if um anyone is there still in clinton iowa but you know it's really cool that these were still in here and then the back it's pretty nice looking, also glossy with a nice overlay, but thin cardboard, so you see it wants to bubble out when you close it. Uh, THX stamp of approval, uh, digital PCM uh, with Dolby surrounding coating, but the big draw here will, of course, be the AC3. Uh, there is the DTS version, which is, of course, crazy rare, usually goes for well over, for over $50, and you can very easily get the special edition five-star DVD with all the extras or the special edition LD box, or the Blu-ray for dirt cheap. So I just wanted to get a copy of this again, rewatch the film because I haven't seen it in a while. I'm not super big on it because it's definitely more on the cheesy side of things for sure. Um, but I do want to fire up the audio mix and check it out and then compare it to some of the other versions which I'll have to track down. But this is just one of the commons that has eluded me in good shape. And I was determined I'm going to get Independence Day, but I'm not going to spend more than a buck or two and I'm going to get it with a good jacket. So I'm just <laughs> I'm going to keep putting back bad copies. And now we move on to some of the really fun stuff. So um, we're, of course, hitting the late 90s, and we're now in the late release era of things. So this next one is definitely harder to find, not super rare, not very expensive, but, you know, it's definitely not a dollar bin disc. Um, I've missed out on this copy several times. Uh, of course, I have the Blu-ray triple feature set, which has this film finally in 235. Uh, earlier releases like this one uh, use a different ratio because it was shot in Super 35, but I've always wanted to get this on LD to check it out. 
So this is the uh, Warner Brothers slash image release of Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery. Uh, so this is definitely getting on into late release territory since it is a film from 1997. I do love the jacket. I love that they went for the whole style of the film and its poster artwork. And it's just a really fun looking LD jacket. I've wanted to get this thing for years and it just always eluded me. I once saw somebody walking out of a store with a dollar copy and I was just like, oh man, <laughs> missed it by five minutes. Um, so anyway, it does have Dolby Surround and it does have 5.1 EC3. Um, what's also great is you pretty much get all the contents that were on the special edition DVD. This is one of those films that was pretty early on DVD, so it seemed everybody had this on DVD and just rewatched it all the time. Uh, pretty much the LD, since it was already being pressed by Image at this point, you know, it kind of got skipped over because a lot of people just jumped straight to DVD and picked this up. Um, and this film got rediscovered on home video because it was not majorly successful on the original release. I remember seeing this. Um, I remember my mom kind of getting upset because she didn't realize how adult it was. Um, but I was already, you know, spy obsessed by that point. But I re vividly remember seeing this film in the theater and not caring about the goofy jokes, but laughing hysterically at all of the jokes specifically directed at spy films, James Bond in particular, and the cliches of classical 60s spy films, and the spy spoofs of the, of the 60s, and the Flint films, and the Matt Helm films and stuff, because I'd already seen most of these by this time. So I vividly remember laughing like an idiot at all that stuff, and being the only one in the theater laughing at those parts, and having people stare at, turn around and stare at me, and then not being able to explain because I was laughing so hard, and then all of the expected jokes not finding very funny. So, and that's still the experience I kind of have with these films. I love the idea of them. I think the concept is great, and I love the the in jokes at the uh, the cliches and the in jokes directed at the Bond films in particular. But the toilet humor I could really do without. So I definitely think this is the most successful of the three films, and I think there's enough gas in the tank to do a good fourth film if they had less toilet humor. Um, but it's a really cool LD, and it's a real special edition because it has all the dvd extras it's got ac3 so definitely pick it up if you can uh, but do be aware this is framed i think it's like two to one or something like that um yeah right here two to one so this film was shot super 35 shown uh 235 in theaters it's 235 on blu-ray but this ld and the dvd are two to one this one follows along similar lines uh, it is pretty much a special edition, has most of the features that came out on the really loaded uh, special feature, uh, sorry, special edition DVD, but uh, I'm super surprised I got this one for, you know, super cheap, because um, it's definitely much later, it's a full-on late release and definitely not common. So this is the standard AC3 release of Rush Hour uh, letterbox. This is pressed by Image, even though it is Warner. Um, of course... This is a full-on late release, so it was pressed in limited quantities, and like with Austin Powers, but even more so, most people just bought this on DVD, or even VHS, because of course VHS ran into the 2000s. Um, so my first copy of this was a double feature of one and two on DVD with all the special features and stuff. I didn't even think that it was on Laserdisc, but once I start, started LD collecting, I started looking at some of the super late ones and saw, wow, they went up to Rush Hour and Sleepy Hollow and stuff. Um, so yeah, even though this is not the crazy rare DTS version that goes for like 75 bucks or more, um, this AC3 pressing, not common, definitely going to cost you a bit unless you happen to find it like I did at a really nice price. So, you know, if you can get this copy, it's, it's a really great late release to have. That's kind of one of those that people don't realize is a late release. Um, so you got a simple widescreen banner across the top, a uh, simple version of the poster art, but it's on a nice glossy jacket. And then the rear here is, is pretty good. Very similar to probably what was on the VHS tape. And then um, I've got my snapper case of this on DVD somewhere, and I think it's the same as this. Also, this does have special features. You have the audio commentary, deleted scenes, making of. So it's got most of the stuff. I think the DVD has a few extra things because they have the space for it. Um, but again, you're, you've got a great picture transfer, a nice late release, uh, PCM Dolby Surround, and then 5.1 AC3. So 
it's a really cool release, and I'm going to watch this whole thing. Um, I've got the Blu-ray trilogy as well, um, but I'm curious to see how this LD stacks up because I'm sure the picture quality is going to be really stunning for LD. Um, so yeah, any late release I can get, I, I'm down for, especially for cheap, but particularly like 98, 99 disc, uh, because they're usually very uncommon and on the pricey side. And if you didn't think I could go any later, I have one last one, and this one is really the surprise of the bunch, because I I never expected to find one of these, let alone own one. This is a very, very late release. Uh, it's definitely among the last handful of discs ever released here in the U.S. It's not up there with like Bringing Out the Dead and Sleepy Hollow, but it, it, it's it's getting up there. Um, so I was stunned to find this copy um, for, for as cheap as I did, and I'm super excited to check this out uh, to look at the picture quality. So uh, again, this is super late release territory. So this is the uh, Warner Brothers slash Image release of Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me, the second film of the Powers trilogy. Uh, of course, Goldmember came out so much later that, of course, it did not make LD. Um, but uh, this this is a really, really rare pressing, definitely among the last... I think if you look on the LaserDisc database, this this is in like the... I know it's in the last 50 discs, but I'm pretty sure it's like in the last... 25 to 30 discs ever released here in the U.S. Um, so definitely it usually goes for, you know, a, a decent amount of money. But again, nothing like uh, Bringing Out the Dead or Sleepy Hollow, which go into the hundreds of dollars. But um, yeah, this I'm just stunned I managed to find this thing. Um, so again, you have the theatrical one sheet, which looks really cool on this LD jacket. It's got a little bit of wear and a little bit of uh, a fading and such. But again, to find this particular disc for as cheap as I did. Um, I'm just really excited to fire this thing up and look at the picture quality because I'm pretty sure this is the uh, the latest disc that I have in terms of release date because I think this came out, this is of course a film from 99 and I'm pretty sure this came out like late in that year on disc. So um and of course, the first time I, I ever saw it was on, um, I didn't see this in the theaters, but I saw it on, um, I'm pretty sure I rented it on VHS tape, actually, because um, I remember, um, yeah, it was tape. I, for some reason, I remember that vividly. That I had to get this on tape at the uh, rental store. But uh, yeah, so the thought of this even being on LD did not even occur to me. Um, so yeah, really nice rear cover as well. Um, nice color, very much fits the film, and uh, it has uh, PCM Dolby Surround and 5.1 AC3. There is no DTS of this like there is of the first one because this is super late release. Um, but you do get, again, special features like the first one. You get deleted scenes and a commentary, so that, of course, carried over on the DVD. But again, it's really cool that they put that on the LD because, again, at this point, special features were kind of non-existent. Um, so a lot of stuff just went straight to DVD and the LD was movie only. And then a lot even dropped having AC3 because I guess people thought it was expensive and LDs were like a last ditch uh, grab at that market at that time, I guess they were thinking. But uh, yeah, this is just a real surprise to, to come across and I'm just really excited to fire this up. I know the first film will probably look pretty good, um, but I'm, I'm just really curious to see what this looks like. Um, because I, I'm sure it, Rush Hour will be even better than Austin Powers 1, but I'm, I'm expecting, I'm hoping and expecting a lot out of this particular release in terms of LD-dom, because these, you know, films are a lot more colorful than uh, a lot of other films of this era, so I'm interested to see how that will play with uh, LD analog video and a late release, so I'm hoping this will become a new benchmark disc for me. Um, I don't know if this and Rush Hour will both do that, but I'm hoping at least one. I'm sure this will. Um, I'm hoping it's not like Phantom Menace where it's like a crushing disappointment for some reason. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this becomes like a new top 10 picture quality LD because it's it's such a late release. I don't see how it couldn't be. But uh, yeah, this, this was just a stunning find. So yeah, definitely if you come across this, pick it up because it is super, super late release stuff. Um, I've seen usually copies for this, I think on the database are hitting around, uh, you know, at least 
15 to $30 or so. Usually um, this copy has got a little bit of cover wear, so I'm, I'm sure it probably wouldn't hit that much, but I definitely didn't expect to, you know, only pay a couple bucks for a copy of this. So um, I'm just really excited to check this thing out. So anytime you come across a late release, just go ahead and pick it up, especially if it's cheap. Well, that does it for this batch of LDs from the past month or two, and definitely more than I thought was going to turn up because it seemed like it had dried up for a while. But then again, as soon as it dries up locally, you start finding stuff online, so on and so forth, and the LD shelves <laughs> get ever larger. So uh, as always, thanks to everybody for watching. Hopefully you found some interesting discs to uh, add to your collection or add to your want list. And uh, I'm really excited about those DTS discs and some of those really nice late releases. So uh, hopefully they will become new collection highlights. So uh, thanks again for watching, everybody.